Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Talk Junkies, where tonight's going to be a very interesting night, as it is each and every single week here at Talk Junkies. Uh, we're in the studio. We got Carl and Johnny in the house. Yo. What do I do? Hola. What's going on, guys? Um, as If you tuned in last week, you know Jesse's going to be MIA for a little while. Uh, he's getting a colonoscopy where he will be out of commission. He's having anal issues. I'm not terribly sure why he's having them, but... Big thing, though. Big, big, big butthole issues. Yeah. And he'll be gone about six months. Yeah, I think he's eating a lot of beans or shit. A lot, a lot of fiber. Yeah, a lot of fiber. So it's coming back to haunt him. So be careful with those beans, ladies and gentlemen. Anywho, um, tune in to last week's podcast if you want to hear about our opinion or our take on the, the baby formula shortage. Also, uh, we talked a little bit about oil and oil prices and stuff like that. That is of interest. That sparks any type of magical wisdom into your mind. Then check last week's podcast out. But I don't know, man. Um, you guys hit me up, said, what are we talking about this week? And I feel like we, a lot of the times when we talk about it, we are sometimes, it's very dismal whenever we leave the podcast. And I know that we've done a podcast on like the city budget of where we live. Mm-hmm. Um, so why not just go over the national budget a little bit? Talk about it, kind of dissect it and see uh, where what we can get with it, right? And I think it, when any, if, you're, if you're listening right now, you already know that a lot of our money goes to the military. An insane amount. It's a lot. Yeah. So I, I was only able to pull up um, 2020's fiscal budget. And, I, and to be honest, like I didn't even know how the process worked and how the budget is created and all that stuff. But it's something that I guess, you know, each department puts in a proposal for how much money they want each year. And I guess with what Obama, we started spending less money on military. And that's what Trump said is whenever he got into office, he said that the military was decimated and it was depleted. And we got to pour more money into it and make it the best military in the world type of thing. So if we look back at 2020, $649 billion of a $1.4 trillion budget went to the military. $649 billion. Now, I I can't click on that and see exactly to what sectors those go to in the military. I know a lot of it, some of it, I don't think all of it, but if you read this article, I'm not sure the website. I can put the link below for you guys to check it out. Some of it does go to VA. Um, veterans and stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure how much of the $649 billion goes to VA. But that's insane. Well, this one I found for May 11, 2022 is $801 billion for just military. So that's already increased, what, <clears throat> 15 20%? Yeah. Which is more than the next 11 countries combined. Right, yeah. In 2020, it was... All the other countries combined, and again, this these are articles and these are numbers that are stated by this specific website. And there's multiple that probably have the same line, but 609 billion by all the other countries are the top seven or however whatever that is. I mean, how, how do how, where did we get to a point where this is the type of environment that we're in? And I think that the answer is we've talked about it in previous podcasts, but isn't that an astronomical amount of money that we're spending on our military? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they could possibly be put other places i think that's the big debate is where where that money could go i mean because if you have 800 billion dollars car like you just said why are we giving 40 billion dollars to ukraine why can't they just take a little bit of that money out of that military budget and give it to you that's what i'm saying like just yeah take the 40 billion from them yeah you spend 800 you know between 650 billion to 800 billion a year on military which probably goes like you said, VA and all that kind of shit. And I would, I would, I would venture out to say maybe ten percent goes to VA of the of the oh yeah eight hundred billion dollars. And I'm sure most of it goes towards what future, you know, advancement. Yeah, technology. Um, you know, what is it? Third party type. I mean, I don't know if SpaceX is considered military, or you know, I don't, I don't know weapons. Obviously, tanks, military, aircraft, drones, drones. Yeah, everything. Top shelf technology type of shit. Yeah. But, I mean, what wars have we been in since we've left uh, Afghanistan, Iraq? Um, what, what, what do we really, I mean, are they, are they just making missile silos throughout the United States with this money to where we're in, in, in how do you say that word, impenetrable? In, impenetrable? Impenetrable. Impenetrable, yeah, to where if someone tries to shoot some shit off, like we're not going to get touched. That's the type of money, I, if, that's what I would expect. 
I, I don't know, man. It's hard to just look at a number on there and be like, oh, where's this go to? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's you, the, that's the problem. Broken down. Are, you, are you able to break it down? Are you looking it up? At- I was trying, but I'm having a hard time doing that. And, and it I shouldn't went. be hard. It shouldn't be hard. It should be out there for everyone to see where this is Yeah, you should be going. able to just look it up. And I mean, it's your money. Yeah, it's, right? it's, it's our tax money. Yeah. So, I mean, I, that's just an insane amount of money. Over half your budget is going to the military. I mean, that, and that's something we didn't even really even bring up. Without even dissecting where this money's going to, half of your budget is going to the military. Which is, I don't, I, I don't get it, man. And it, like he said, it just depends where it's going to. I mean, you can't just assume it's all weapons and, you know, I'm like you said, I'm sure there's, would, would, is that part of the GI Bill? Is some of the, is that part of the defense budget too? Like shit like that, yeah. In, insurance for for the military. Does that come out of that? I'm honestly more surprised just by the fact that the national budget's only like 1.4 trillion or whatever for 2020. I thought it was way higher than that. That's crazy to me. I know 1.4 trillion is already a shit ton. Yeah, but for some reason I was I I thought we were like at four trillion a year or some shit. So that's well, yeah, because Trump he printed six trillion dollars for COVID in, in maybe that's what it was that made me think that the national budget was higher or something yeah, so they signed just a how bill, much money they've done lately they signed a bill into law that was five times larger than the national budget or almost five times for covid relief which you know whatever we know where the ppe money went and all that shit but when you break it down i mean and we even talked about it earlier where it, even if you take that 650 billion dollars and, and you make it 200 billion dollars you still have an elite military at that point yeah and where and where else could what else good could we do with that extra four hundred billion dollars in that budget? Would we be lacking at that point if you drop it four hundred billion dollars and you put it towards uh, you know helping out the citizens who need it the most? What we've talked about in the podcast before: people with mental health issues, education, whatever, healthcare, education, yeah, anything, right, everything. Just throw into literally anything else. Yeah, literally anything else, and you don't really have to say anything after that, right? It would be beneficial. I mean, the other options are just going to tax the fuck out of us more. In order to get those things in, in done. Order, yeah, in, in order. They're not going. They're never going to decrease the military budget. Well, I think Obama did, I'm pretty sure. And then the Trump increased it again. I'm not sure. I did, there has to be a military budget by year. But Once again, it's hard to like, since I haven't broke down the actual military budget and like what it all goes to, it's hard to like, we're just three random guys sitting in a room. It's hard to to really put that into play of like what's needed and what's not needed. But I can say that I think that almost half of our national budget being strictly for the Department of Defense is insane when you think about it that way. Yeah. Like, no matter what it goes to, like, I, I can't tell you what each dollar goes to in the military or whatever. Right. But the fact that half of your national, or almost half of your national, like, your nationwide budget is Department of Defense only, like, that's, that's, I don't know, that's crazy to me. Isn't it? When there's so many other things that it, that everything else now has to get divided amongst you know, in the other half, isn't that was the running you know called maybe joke is a poor choice of word, but we're number one in the in, as far as military spending. But what what number are we in in education? Oh, and all the other things. And all the other things. Yeah. we're where it's way like oh, we're behind. like twenty fourth in education and whatever. And, and did yeah. we did we not used to be a lot higher? I don't know. You know, to be I, I like to think that we were. What do you mean? You know, they they send out report not send out, but you can look at reports and say in like uh you know, maybe uh, I don't know, China or somewhere else, you know, somewhere's number one in education and mm-hmm. and those different type of platforms, math, you know, all that kind of shit. And we're just we're falling behind. If you look I Yeah. I think I've seen it before where it's just United States gets no, I don't even further think we're in the top further. 50. Yeah, exactly. I don't think we're, you know, in some in the, I think we're in the top fifty so you, for education. I don't think so. In some classifications we're we're way behind. But we're number one in military spending. You know, other places take care of their citizens as far as healthcare, education, shit like that. Yeah, I remember, and I don't, I don't feel like trying to find it right this moment. But I remember seeing a thing in the past that at first, the, what I was looking up was divided about. It was divided by states, so it was just states in the U.S. But then they had like a link to something else that went over like the entire world or whatever, and all this in different countries and stuff. And it talked about. That same kind of thing, the rating thing, but it was like rating of like quality of life or whatever, oh, yeah. and what people voted to are compared to like spending power of the of the, whatever the nation's currency is, and all this different stuff. And we were doing awful yeah. in that, doing terrible. So I was able to find just break it down, and this is from two thousand so two thousand thirteen, right? Or two thousand yeah, two thousand thirteen. 
And even then, the the military budget was six hundred ten billion dollars. So that's what forty million dollars off, or thirty nine million dollars mm-hmm. off of what it was in twenty twenty. So Obama was spending a lot of money on military. So I don't know what Trump was saying, but if you break it down, you got operations and maintenance at two hundred fifty eight billion dollars. Military personnel cost you one hundred fifty three billion. Uh, pro- procurement ninety seven billion. What's procurement? I have uh, no idea what that means. Well, to, when I think per, it depends what they're talking about, because okay, so I, I was like, like is that procurement of troops or land? Like, is that, yeah, yeah, procurement of what? I don't what know. What does procurement a, mean? Like to gain, to, okay. to seize, to, to gain. To, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So research, development, testing, and evaluation at sixty three billion. Military construction at eight billion. Family housing at one point four billion. Other mi- miscellaneous costs, which can m- maybe be VA, I don't know. Maybe VA is not even in the military budget. It's something separate. Right. Because it doesn't mention that. But uh, other miscellaneous costs, two billion, two point seven billion. Atomic energy defense activities, $17 billion. Defense-related activities at $7 billion. So the total spending... That's also just so generic. Like all those, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that's so... But at least you can put your mind to see where yeah. some of the money's going. Then it goes into... Well, the, the last one you read, what was the last one you read right after the n- nuclear one? Uh, defense related activities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, isn't that everything in, in the, you know, Department of Defense? Well, so you, then you go with the budget request. This was 2010. The Army requested 244 billion, Navy at 142, Air Force 170 billion, defense wide joint activities requested 118 billion, the Marine Corps at 10, uh, 10 million, and the defense intelligence requested 80 billion. Because of classified nature, budget is an estimate and may not be the actual figure. I don't know. Damn, this actually goes in. It goes in any more depth. 2011 budget request: F an F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, 11.4 billion. Oh, here you go. The VA is it's, it's its own department, and it's it's requesting actually right here. It says it's requesting three three hundred one point four billion dollars for 2023. Does it say whether or not that's part of funded. the military budget? No, it is part of the United States Department of Veterans Affairs as a cabinet level executive branch department of the federal government. So it's its own branch. So it's separate. It's separate. So they like right there. So they're asking for three hundred billion dollars uh, f- for funding. So that's what goes towards. But how many times have you heard that they're underfunded? That's a oh, lot yeah. of money. You know, it's a lot of money. How are oh, they underfunded? Yeah. And especially if you look at the amount of people, how many people are in the military? Fuck, a lot. You think? And, and I guess whenever you look at, well, it goes back to like what Johnny said before. They they breed us for that. You know, a shitty education, but then they're like, oh, hey, come join the military. We'll give you a free education. Yep. Shitty education, high cost education, fucking prison systems, the capital, like all this stuff that's just like. It's 1.4 it, million know, active duty. You don't need to do a draft because it's real easy to get volunteers. Oh, yeah. Because that's, that's what they've switched to now. So, I mean, but, and I know there are people who are retired in the military, so I'm sure that number is way higher, but 300 billion. But there's only 1.4 million, I guess. I don't know if that's enough money to go around for veterans, but I feel like there's a lot of money to be used in a positive way, 300 billion. I don't know. The budget breakdowns, maybe it's just because I'm a little sick, so I'm kind of zoning in and out. Yeah. (laughs) But the budget breakdowns are like, I don't know. I don't feel anywhere remotely even. I mean, all the stuff that we talk about on the podcast, I'm like, yeah, I can just put in my two cents with the like the 2% knowledge I know about this. Mm -hmm. For this, I'm like even less. I'm like 0.2%. You know what I mean? I'm like... Like I can't do the I can't do the math behind it all and know where it's going and sure I, I don't know we've never really been like just bringing out like numbers like this before so I kind of I, I completely understand but just the numbers that we've heard so far to me it's frustrating that these these military uh, entities are requesting this amount of money when the, the United States has so many other problems to be fixed and faced with and, I concur. And war is just something that's always, I mean, it's always in the back of our minds. It's something that no one ever wants. Right. But it gets funded the most, and it's something that we don't do that often. And when we do, I, I, don't, I don't, probably most people don't agree with it. I mean, when we went to Afghanistan and Iraq, a lot of people protested it, didn't want to do it. A lot of misinformation, in my opinion, that was fed to the public. That, yeah. Um, but you can't say that all these places are underfunded when you can send $40 billion. And again, who knows what's all in that, in that bill that just passed, but you can't send $40 billion to... Ukraine for war efforts and tell us that there's not enough for, there's not enough money for funding for the VA or healthcare or whatever education you know you you can't have it both ways you, no, can't, you can't say there's not enough money for us but yet there is for other pla- other places you know what I mean like yeah it, it you, they can't have both 
That's the, that's what exactly exactly right because whenever you have crises like we faced, whenever you see shit like uh, shortages that we're having, and you can blame it on Russia, you can blame it on COVID, you can blame it on people not wanting the, to uh, 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 alcohol, <laughs> baby. Sorry. And it's just like instead of having these shortages, let's just shrink the military budget just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit, and let's get these things back and running, and offer people more money with this money that we're spending and doing nothing. And again, and maybe we're just three dumb dudes and we need this military and we need to have the best military and the best shit when war is not necessary. Yeah, well, I mean, because... <laughs> well, it's not even on that one. Oh, yeah. According to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, it would cost $20 billion to end homelessness in the United States. $20 billion There you go. to home all the homeless. So that's not even... Just $20 billion. $20 billion. So, I mean... So just think of it like this: that yeah, you can pull twenty billion from that. Elon Musk just bought fa- or just bought Twitter for forty he's back, he's for, f- out. for forty four. Well, he he had the offer. He had he had money in hand for forty four billion dollars for Twitter. So you're saying he can't just take twenty like not just him, but like pull everybody together and they just donate the twenty what it takes to. Are you talking about like it. you're talking about like taxing the rich? <laughs> not even ta- yeah taxing them, but <laughs> just them all or come just, together and just or, end homelessness. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. why not solve the fucking issue? You got, obviously, you got money to spend. Get fucking, get Zuck in there, and Bezos. But, I mean, they Why should, does it have to come from the budget? I mean, you they can keep their budget, but then you just make these people, not make them, but, I mean, they should have a fucking soul and, and, and want to help the country. I think that's what it comes to more is, like, you should have a fucking heart as a human being and be like. Yeah. Like, I have the power to fix this issue. Yeah. And that'll make you look like a fucking king. In my opinion, yeah. Instead of him buying Twitter, he's like, "Hey, man, I'm going to end homelessness." Ex- in, yeah. I'd earn Imagine a lot. It earn a lot more respect, in my opinion. Imagine the tax write off he'd get for that. Exactly. Dollars. Exactly. He's you know? going to write it off anyways. So I mean, it doesn't have to come from the from the government doing it. I mean, probably it should, and it should because it's it, our money. It should. It's our money. But again, but that's when, that's crazy that it's just such a small number. There's but a, but again, when you can send forty billion to fucking Ukraine, twenty twenty to fix homelessness There's yeah money. Which, is, which is great that's that number just when you look at it in comparison to how much we spend on the military or how much our budget is in general or how much these billionaires make and you're like oh man i get it if it costs a few trillion dollars to end homeless or whatever but it's literally they've done the math and you're like yeah 20 billion yeah which, like that's a fucking 20 billion a year the- 20 billion a year yeah, in but, all fairness but again that's what a budget in, in for. you know perpetuity but that's what a budget is for, you uh, yeah. know? Well, that's the thing. Whenever you vote for your local congressmen or your congresswomen or, or even for Senate and shit like that, that's what they campaign on, saying that this is what they're going to do and this is what they're going to fight for. Fuck, they are. But these are the people who are putting these budgets together, and this is when you get your actual budget for the actual United States. Yeah, but in the, go read one of those budgets. See where all that money actually goes. Right, I guarantee it's not where you think. Right, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. But maybe even put what a, are you doing down here? Maybe even put <laughs> a, right, put a cap on how much each sector gets. You know, like military or or, department yeah. or education. Put a cap or a percentage on how much you can spend on each one because they're all very critical and important. But the military shouldn't get fifty percent of the budget. That's the other thing. That's what I was saying earlier to Carl about the just even if you ignore ignore six hundred and forty nine billion and the one point four seven trillion that the budget is, pretend that number doesn't exist and just take your budget in general and you're like, oh, this is our budget one hundred percent. You know whatever that number is, and then you're like, oh yeah, forty seven percent of it is military. That sounds insane, regardless of what the what the numbers are. Yeah. You know, yeah. And the fact I think about these budgets, that you know, it's like it it keeps going up every year. Well. Obviously, sometimes it goes down, but for the most part, it goes up. But from what I understand, like what about their budgets? It's like if they don't spend it, then they're like, oh, well, then we only get X amount next year. You get less. So then they are, they're forced to. So they're like, oh, well, let's just go yeah. spend it on fucking something stupid. Like we made a budget. We got to spend it all. Yeah, because it gets approved. I that's think. just how that's. I mean, that we've seen that firsthand in just corporate stuff. I mean, Small tier, just like restaurants and that's shit. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. And, and it's that's the same kind of shit. You saying it before. That's what it, it's in my head now. But yeah. I mean, anything that's not used when it comes to federal money, I mean, that's the that's our money. That's our money. Then that, that money should go back into where it needs to go. Nah. Fighting the deficit, which is staggering and, and keeps continuously growing at an yeah. exponential rate. Exactly. But no, they're not going to do that. No. I say put a cap on it, man. That's what I say. Put a cap on the fucking federal budget and then give give the military 
give education 20%, give blah, blah, blah. You know, come on, let's, let's be for real. How do you, how, how have we, I'm 33. I'm, I'm just curious why I, I'm, I'm just finally looking at this and saying, what the fuck, man? And I know I have throughout the podcast, but just to look at it look briefly tonight and see these numbers, we've allowed this to happen. I mean, we've, it depends on what you mean by allow. Yes, we've allowed it to happen, but there's also, there's a lack of talking about the education factor. Dude, none of us, none of us learned, I guess, I can only speak for me, but I'm making an assumption. None of us learned in school how to how to be involved in any of this. The most that they got political wise was make sure you go out there and vote. That's all they said. That's it. Make sure you go out there and vote. And I remember turning 18 in high school, like senior year, you know, and like half the seniors could vote and half of them couldn't or whatever. Because for me, my senior year was a voting year or whatever. So or an election year. And just remember them like really pushing that, like really pushing like, hey, go out to the, to the polls, go out and vote and do all this and get your I voted sticker and all that stuff. And it was only for even just presidential. It wasn't even just like local stuff. Like they don't teach you. They literally in the education system, they don't teach you how to be involved in your government. And I mean, even if you take like civics classes and stuff like that, they don't teach you, which is what that should be. Yeah, you're just fed whatever, whatever it Once is. Once again, only speaking for me. I right. don't know how it went oh, no, for y'all. Agree. But Everyone, whatever you learn in social studies and history is what you learn. It's pretty broad across uh, just general edu- or public education. Everyone's learning the same shit for the most part. Yeah. Um, so you're right. Nowhere really in that. It just, I mean, it, it, you understand what it is. Like you understand what a president is. You learn about their different yeah, branches. Yeah, you learn like that. about the branches and all that, but not like, yeah, like what you fucking do. Not like how do I get involved? Like it's, it's, it's almost ironic how we spend so much time in history class going over the revolutionary war and talking about like no taxation without representation and the Boston tea party and all this. Like we really like, at least in my school, I feel like they really hammered home the revolutionary war. I feel like they spent the majority of time in American history on that subject. Yeah. And it was just the whole no taxation without representation. And this is super important and all that, but then also we're not going to help you learn how to be involved in your government at all. Zero. Zero. I mean, there's nothing in there to really teach you on on what local politics is. I didn't even. I mean, like, I didn't really know what a nothing. City, I didn't know what a city council member was until I was a little bit older. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't even know how my own town runs. It, it, you know, I, you have to get older and be a little bit involved or know people around the city to kind of figure out what's going on. And even then, I still don't. Even and I feel like I there's a ton of people my age. I'm 31. I feel like there's a ton of people who are 31 who have no clue anything about their uh, about their city council or their mayor or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, you know that there's a mayor, but do you really know what they do or the city planner no. or uh, the city council or the, the, the treasurer or the any treasurer, of it yeah. and like where you're. Yeah. And who's the most important person? Right. I mean, I mean, allegedly it's the mayor, but they're not the one who makes the most money. No. That seems kind of backwards to me, but that's that's crazy that that's really not even taught in school. And that's one of those things. If, if we were to shrink the military budget and, and put a little bit of that into education and, and focus more on and how you even get involved. Like, what are you That's supposed to I'm do saying. right now as a human being like you, Paul? Well, I know now. I know now. I, I, oh, because you did it on your own, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they don't tell you, like, oh, this is step one. Stand up and then go to your local courthouse to get a bulletin about what. Like, they don't tell you any, you know what I mean? Like, Cause it's like des- figure it out. It's designed that way. Figure it out. It's designed that way. Yeah. 100%, man. Like, that's they have it down to a T. They have what it is they want people to learn. And it's very cut and dry, and it's what they want is to, to bring people down and to make us stupid, I guess you could say. And I feel like when you look at it, when you take a step back and look at it that way, it's almost, that's too, like, that t- it's too hard home, to, that hits too hard at home to even be a conspiracy at that point. You know what I mean? Right. Like, no, it's legit. It's not you, a conspiracy that it. they didn't like, oh, that they just forgot to do these things or whatever. Like, no, there, there has to be like on purpose. This curriculum is designed to not get people involved. Yeah. And th- at this point, I'm like, that's not even a conspiracy. That's like right in front of our eyes. Because imagine if they were to teach everyone in the school when you have however many students there are, that's going to spark the interest of some people mm-hmm. more so than it would if you didn't teach it at all. And just imagine the type of impact that that would have on society in, in, in the future. Substantially, it would be a, a large impact. Let's just educate this educate system for anything, not just, you know, so that, just but throwing, like just life. Just, yeah, true. They and don't even, teach you nothing. No, and even throwing more money at it, that's not going to fix it. You have to, yeah, you just can't let it be run by the government, which I don't know if they're technically ran by the government, but let's be real, it is. 
Well, yeah, because I'll tell you what you can and can't do. Yeah. What you can and can't say. Yeah. You know, they... It, it, I don't know if they proofread those books, but I'm sure I'm sure they would. I mean, everyone's getting the same. I mean, books. it's still the government. You have state curriculums and exactly. Yeah, I mean, you go over state constitution in like seventh and eighth grade, but I don't know, man. There's a lot that can be fixed with the with the the money that 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 again. That oh, yeah. is coming from the military, and, and we're not saying that we have all the right answers, and what we're saying is 100 percent correct. But I think just kind of heading heading towards what we're talking about, I think that would be a step in the right direction. You change the curriculum a little bit. And, and I don't know, I'd like to dig a little deeper. We might, I, I need to reach out to this guest or I need to reach out to a gentleman who has, uh, he's, he's local, he's from Kansas. His name's Josiah, I believe. Um, he's a teacher who was teaching some somewhere in Kansas and he's, he was just fed up with like the mass mandates and all that stuff. And then CRT came through and he didn't really want to teach that. I'm, I, I could be misspoken. Well, CRT, on, oh, critical race yeah, theory. Okay. I could be misspoken on that. I might be wrong, but he just opened up his own homeschooling. Or whatever you call that. I mean, yeah, like his uh, own like, like m- little school, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Where he has like seventeen students, and then like ne- that, like next year he's going to be pushing like towards eighty students, hiring a few more teachers, and just maybe that's the route that we need to take because a lot of parents are seeing this and pulling their kids out of school, and they're getting taught the same shit that we were getting taught, and we're not getting all the right information that we need to develop as a human being to sur- to survive in this type of environment. Maybe that's what we need. I don't know. The only problem I have with that, and that works great right now. The only problem I have with that is in like long term, like in theory, if you were to have a lot of that happening and going on, then it's that person's ideals. Exactly. Now you have a ton of people all under one government, whether that be federal or just at a state level, even who are now all being taught different things I, by, I, I, which isn't necessarily bad, but there, there's the, still, there's there needs st- to be some, well, no, Johnny, there's still, there's a I feel like line. a federal curriculum is important. No, the one we have just is garbage. Yes, exactly. The one that is, that we have is, is brainwashed propaganda. Yeah. bullshit. I still, whenever you do these co-op slash homeschooling <clears throat> things, they still do have to follow some type of curriculum. I, I assume. So the basic, they're getting accredited yeah, and all shit. that. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. count as the kids just skipping school and but being it's, truant. And, it's that same bullshit that we don't want, you know, but they yeah. can still throw in some truth in there because it's their own type of shit. Right. But, I don't know. It'd be interesting. I'm going to email him. Hopefully he can come on and just give us, shed a little light yeah, on it. That'd be a cool one to do. Yeah. I'm going to, I need to email him tonight because I think he would be interested. It would be cool to talk to someone like that because that's a lot of what we're talking about right now. Right, be very... it'd be cool to talk to just someone in the age, education field in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick their fucking. We really brain. haven't done that. I don't think. Uh, Klyzak was a college. Oh teacher. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but we didn't really talk about education. I mean, we did. We talked about the gamification of education and stuff. I remember that, which that yeah. was a good one. I enjoyed that podcast. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know really how much more we can hit home on that, man. It's just. Um... I mean, we really didn't get into the healthcare aspect. I mean, I mean, I don't even know how much we spent on healthcare, but it's. I mean, like what you know, aspect of healthcare? Well, well so I was kind of looking at something like that about you know we talked about funding it. What did you? Would you ever? Did you ever look anything up on like what? What it would be to fund it? Because what did I read? Uh, you, I, I don't know how Johnny. You, if you want to hit that or look at that to see how much it would cost to give everyone healthcare. But I remember finding it before, and it's it's a lot. In all fairness, like it's one, like one point two. Trillion? It's like three point seven trillion a year or something, or three point two trillion oh, I a year. What I read was like one point two like trillion a year. Over, it's over, over ten years, and then the and March. then the cost would lower because it has to deal with the transitional period as well. Like three. they factored in the transition from the current system to a universal Medicare for all kind of system. All right, so we're not talking about Barack Obamacare or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. that is. No, they're not forcing it on people. I mean, I guess they, they technically are. Everyone would have it. But you said three point seven trillion over ten years. No, 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 no. Three point seven. It's three point two, I think, not three point seven. Okay. Because it's thirty two. Thirty two trillion over ten years. Three point two trillion a year. Okay. I'm curious how much. That's a lot. What is, I need to look up what Canada's population is, and then see how much they spend per year because they do have the the universal mm-hmm. health care in yeah. Canada. That would be very interesting. Okay, but. Thirty-two trillion. I mean, over ten years. That's three point two trillion a year for ten years. I mean, but the at the route where we're printing money, printing money right now. I mean, we right during COVID. I mean, we we had two years right there worth of health care for everyone, as opposed to everyone asking for handouts. Give everyone free health care for two years during COVID. I mean, that would have been a big help. But I mean, the environment that the health care Obama came in, man, and I'm this kind of frustrates me because I was so young. Before, I mean, when Obama made Obamacare, I was, I'm not so young, but I was young to where I didn't need health insurance because I was young. I didn't have any kids. I didn't have a girlfriend. I was just doing my You were invincible. Yeah, exactly. I know there's a lot of people out there like that, 
But I wish I was a little bit older during those times, like maybe Bush era and maybe even Clinton era to see what healthcare was like and how it operated because allegedly it was, it worked. It was affordable. You know what I'm saying? Like the deductibles weren't too high. Again, I'd have to go back and look at these things. And if people who, people who are listening, put it in the comments below and, and how, how affordable was insurance back in those days? If you had kids and a family but and man, like that, looking at it like that, the farther you go back, everything was more affordable. We mm-hmm. talked about housing and I'm not and, going that far back. I'm just saying Bush Clinton era. I know, but even, but that's what I'm saying is the closest to what it would, you know what I'm saying? Like I get that, but that's not, but that's not even that far off from like the eighties whenever housing was affordable. Whenever college tuition was affordable. Oh, I know. We've talked about it quite a bit. But I'm, I'm just saying when they said that uh, that insurance worked its best, right? Mm-hmm. Health insurance where it was affordable, most closest to the time where it wasn't in my lifetime. I guess I don't know if that makes sense. But um, Obamacare kind of just, it was forced upon everyone. Granted, I know maybe not everyone if you knew the loopholes and just didn't pay the, the fines or whatever. But there's got to be something different, man. There's got to be a way in, in, in privatizing it. I don't know if that's the route. I don't even really know too much about it, but that's what we have right now is privatized healthcare. Right. But it's, it's in an environment with inflation and all this other bullshit. Well, yeah. And but that anything privatized would be, that's part of the capitalism thing. That's, I don't know, man, we always get on. I'm like, man, we always talk about these like subjects and I try to stay focused on. No, you're good. You're good. I try to stay focused on just the subject at hand. But at the end of the day, I'm like, it all comes back to the fact that like companies, like big corporations are making more money than they've ever made in their entire life. Like their profits are oh, just yeah. outrageous, you know, year over year record profits kind of thing. And yet people now minimum wage is still the same. People are still making oh, yeah, the same yeah. money they've always made, but inflation has went up. So their dollars worth less. The dollars only worth less for like everybody. Else. Like the money's there, man. So like these corporations are making more money than they've ever made. And the average American person is making less than yeah. they've ever made value wise. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's where the money is. Like it's, it's basic math. You can see where the fucking money is. Right. So you, we, you talk about the greatest transfer of wealth that happened during COVID. I mean, that has to play a part too. And that's happened mm-hmm. throughout each bailout. We talk about 2008 with the, uh, with the, the housing the, crisis, the financial crisis. Well, yeah, no, I'm talking, sorry. I didn't mean to say that the bailouts, when we build out the uh, the airlines and shit like that, there's been multiple bailouts since like 2008. Was oh, it? okay. 2008 was the big one was the banks and stuff because they were yeah. all like handing out loans for... And I was I was 19 at the time, so I had no idea what the fuck was going on. And I should have known what was going on, but I just went business as usual. I mean, shit didn't change for us really here in the middle of the United States. I know gas got up to like 417 a gallon in Missouri in 2008. So, yeah. But I don't think it was for as long as it has been now. Maybe it was, but... Um, just the amount of bailouts that have happened. So you're saying they're sucking us dry slowly, but surely mm-hmm. and they're wringing the towel is, is in getting it as dry as possible as they can. They're squeezing us as much as possible while these rich top 1% people just suck in the money. Yep. Yeah. And that's the real problem. That's the dude. Fuck, fuck the national budget. Fuck the, the curriculum and all this different stuff. I'm like, like there's your overall problem is just, evil people in places of power. I feel like if you change the national budget though, and focus it more on something else, it could change those types of things. But I, I disagree. You'd have to change the person. Yeah. Uh, there's just, never yeah. Gonna happen. Dude, there's, there's just such a major issue. And w- once again, that's something that we've talked about this, that hits more home with me. It's more like, it's what I'm more passionate about, you know, is the whole, the, the workers rights and workers being paid more. And, you know, like putting a cap on CEOs instead of being like, Oh, you can make a hundred and, 57 times whatever like no like you can make 25 times your lowest employee that's it that doesn't stop you from making more money by the way if your company's doing well you get to make more money but congrats everybody else in your company who is helping you also gets to make more money like what's wrong with that yeah but we're like nope that's not capitalist free market let's do this thing america just that yeah just in those scenarios that's the only time it really applies other than that we're socialist well, when, it, when it comes to taxes. Yeah, well, like I said earlier, like Musk, you know, he, he he wanted to buy Twitter. He found the money. He found the $40 billion to do it. They can do shit if they want to do it. They just don't. Mm-hmm. He's buying Twitter because that's what he wanted to do. He'll Yeah, he fucking moved shit around and got the $44 billion. And he's like, oh, cool, I'm going to go buy Twitter. He's worth like $140 billion or something crazy. But I'm like saying, yeah, but he, he, you know, he, he wanted to buy this for, you know, $40 billion. He did. You want to end... 
Uh, poverty, you want to end homelessness for 20? Nah, fuck that. I don't want to do that. That's such a good hearted thing. Why would I want to do that? That's what I'm saying. It's just the evilness of like, yeah, you're never going to fix it, you know? And and that's just, sorry, my cat's in here acting a fool. I heard heard him meowing. Where are you? She might be outside the door. Okay. Trying to come in. She's downstairs. She's very vocal. She's a tortoise shell, man. Oh yeah. Tortoise shells are very vocal. Is that a type of cat? Well, I mean, but uh, yeah, tortoise shell. Yeah, I didn't know that. But I was thinking about healthcare earlier. Uh, point I was I was thinking about was, could you take Medicare and Medicaid and turn that into universal healthcare? So state run, uh, state run. It's like Medicaid right here. I was I was looking it up earlier while I was waiting on you, and it was uh, says for twenty twenty, Medicare spending grew three point five percent to eight hundred twenty nine point five billion dollars. So that's for people who are retired. So that's just Medicare. That's what it's supposed to be for. But why can't you just you know take your your three trillion dollars that you need? You know, there's eight. Well, that's what it is. The universal health care plan that I was looking at was specifically entitled Medicare for all. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, it's, so it's Medicare for all. So you would take that. You already have almost half of it. Just with you're already spending it on Medicare already. But that doesn't include everyone. And even then, I think if you do Medicare for all, the rich people are still going to have their own fucking their their own shit. They're not going to. They'll pay at cost, or I don't know if they would even want to be involved in something like that. But what I'm saying is you already have almost half the money. So when people are like, where's the money going to come from? You already have almost half of it. How much did you say? Eight hundred and twenty or $830 billion a year on Medicare. So, I mean, so that's like 30%, yeah. right? So that I, I didn't even look up what Medicaid is. So, fuck. Oh, shit, you're right, yeah. If they're Medicaid in there, I'm sure it's over, you'll get over a trillion right there. Right. Because you know, that, you know that's probably over $200 billion, I would assume. Yeah, me too. So again, you, it's just moving the money around. You yeah. Know? So at that point, you're only doing like yeah, one one trillion or one point five trillion. Dude, it all comes down. The money's there. And how much it was is, that? Yeah. Like, so, like whether whether you're looking at our government or you're just looking at these top fucking top ten corporations in the United States or what? Like like the money exists. The money is yeah. there. Yeah, you're taxed enough. It's well, there. Just talk to someone who's from Canada. I mean, there's plenty of those I people. Have. Yeah, and they and I don't know if it was you who were tell, who yeah. was telling me this, but yeah, like they said that. Yeah, you, you yeah, said it last week. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking awesome. He loved it. The lines aren't as long as what you're told. You go in there, you do your business. No, they always talk about, oh, you're going to stand here and wait forever with a broken arm or whatever. Like, no, that's not how it fucking works. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I don't now, you know. But no, yeah, I talked to him, and he was just like, because I asked him about it. I was curious. I'm like, because, you know, I realized they had it, and he's like, oh, dude, it's fucking awesome. But do you step into the territory if you do something like universal health care where you, does that give the government too much power at that point? Imagine the amount of data collection or whatever the fuck that means. I mean, if you if you hand over something like that, does it give them too They're much? already getting that anyways, except for now, you're, right now you're paying for it. Right. Well, what, what would be different, Paul? You're already taxed, so they, they already do that. When you go to the doctor, you're protected by HIPAA, so they, they can't give the government your information anyway, so what would be different? No, oh, they're getting that information. That's what I'm saying. Like, but that, but they're doing that right now with you paying for private insurance. So why not just? So do? nothing really changes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. nothing would change. Yeah, I'm just trying to just think of any negative kind of. I get what you're saying. Oh, no, yeah. Type of negative thing that would come with universal. Trying healthcare. to play devil's advocate. And like the biggest thing for universal health care, the biggest like, is, is what you just described, Carl. Is people saying that, oh, if you go to Canada, you're waiting in these long lines, and no one's going to get like if you're on a transplant list, like you're going to wait forever, and then you're going to die. I don't know if that's the case in Canada. I'd have to look it up. Right. I was um, like, it's funny when people say that. Oh, if you're on a transplant list or whatever, you're going to wait forever and die. Bitch, you're already on that spot right now, except the difference is you don't even get on the list because you don't have the fucking money. Yeah. And because your insurance isn't going to cover it. Well, even then you have to be healthy to, or you have to be in. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you're worried because, oh man, I'm going to be on this list or what? Like, you're not getting there right now. You don't have the fucking money right now and your insurance doesn't cover it. Like, well, and the other thing, I mean, something else you got to think about, I I would think, is that are we not one of the leading healthcare like providers, as far as not, not like healthcare, but as far as hospitals and, and the uh, services you can receive, are we not one of the top, if not the top? I would I would assume we are just based on population alone. Right. So you it depends though. I so, mean, because some people go for certain procedures to like Mexico. Or yeah, there's specialty places, but yeah. I mean, as a, as just a whole, would you assume we're one of the tops, if not the top? Yeah. yeah. So my question would be. You know, you all these pl- other places, Canada, all the other places that have universal health care. Well, their infrastructure for health care is not as good as ours. So would ours just not be better just by that alone? So if we were to get universal health care, would it water down our medical system or our medical environment? No, I wouldn't think so. I'm just saying, like, we have 
the advancements and the, the 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 quality of doctors to provide the level of need. I I would love for someone to come on the podcast or in the comments let us know. I want to hear an actual legitimate argument against universal health care because I feel like when you look at all these other countries who have it, you know, places over in like the UK or over there, over in Europe, or you've got Canada or whatever, like you look at places who have universal healthcare or some form of something really close to socialist healthcare, basically. And you hear good things from all the people who live there about their healthcare system. And then here, I feel like 99% of the time, the two arguments I hear are either the one we just brought up, brought up about oh well you're going to stand in a doctor's line forever while you're bleeding out it takes too long because you got a guy with a runny nose in front of you whatever you hear either that argument or you hear oh that's un-american why should i pay for something that blah 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 is doing whatever when i've brought up the the fire truck defense before or whatever where i'm like man you you're like i'm paying for like you don't have privatized fire insurance to make sure a fire truck gets out to your house like that's part of our you know universal system is you can call 911 and a fire truck will be there you know our tax dollars go to that they're there to you know make sure your house doesn't burn to the ground or whatever all this the argument i'm straying away from it sorry well, you're fine man the only arguments i ever hear against it are the one that we brought up about oh yeah. you're going to stand in line forever or oh, that's not the american way like that's it just oh that's you, not the american way are you paying to medicare or medicaid anyways I, which is fueling. I'm just saying, I, I want to hear a legitimate argument with like facts and numbers and everything against universal health care and like why it's a bad thing. So again, Not one that's just driven by our brainwashed, like, well, that's how we do it. That's how we've always done it. You, so, like, for me, Carl, you ask, um, when, when, whenever I think about these types of things, I think first thing is, like, like you said, are we not one of the top leading nations when it comes to health care providers? Yeah when it comes to hospitals and stuff like that. And it's that way for a reason. And maybe it is because of what we've had for so long and what we've created obviously has created this, this really good healthcare system. Granted, it's unaffordable. Um, so if you were to ad adapt something like universal healthcare, what type of impact does it have on a country of 320 million people? I think it's a very large impact because doctors are used to making the amount of money that they're making when they're in these large hospitals. Um, I don't know how their pay, pay scale works and how they make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if we were to do a universal health care, if those types of pay rates would still be a thing for these doctors. So what would the incentive be for universal health care for doctor? I know it's to provide people with health, whatever. I mean, that's just something that strikes my mind. When I no, think and that's why I want to hear the numbers. That's a possible argument. Yeah. I want to hear that argument, yeah. you know, but even I just, but, I, but, hate but, but, the, but, I hate the idea of the, the American, like this is the way we've done it thing. Cause I'm like, but I mean, the amount of people who get scared about getting sick or something happening, and I'm obviously nobody wants to get sick. Nobody wants bad things to happen to them. Nobody wants to break their leg or whatever. So you should be scared of that. But people are more scared about the money part than their actual own health. People avoid going to doctors because it costs yeah, too much money. Right. People avoid getting medical help with like a fucking ambulance. Y yeah. That's what I was going to say is, I, well, I was going to lead into that. What I was going to say was like therapy or something. If oh, someone's yeah. dealing with like depression or suicide or whatever, people avoid that because they can't fucking afford it. People avoid going to the doctor when they're sick because they can't afford it. And they're like, I guess I'll just work and be unhealthy and whatnot because I can't afford to go to the doctor, which is ridiculous. But then no, like the ambulance thing too. Yeah. If we're all out at a bar drinking together and we're being fucking dumb for whatever reason. Yeah, I get it. It's my own fault. I'm out here drinking, being dumb. Regardless, put it in any situation then. Fuck it. We're not at a bar. We're at Home Depot shopping for lumber and something happens or whatever and I get knocked the fuck out. The reflex of what, you know, the Home Depot department's supposed to do in all this is to call 911 and get an ambulance out there and stuff. I shouldn't have to be on the ground bleeding out being like, no, 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 no. Don't call an ambulance. I can't afford it. Yeah, I, like I, I someone drive grand. me. Well, sort That's of, fucking sort, ridiculous. Sort of if you have a heart attack, if it happened at Home Depot and something not, fell on you. Or get an Uber. Then, you then know? That, that would be on Home Depot. Or walking down the goddamn <laughs> sidewalk, Paul. I had, I had to say it. I'm I, sorry. But do you not understand what I'm I getting do, at, though? I know what you, yes. Like, people literally are like, people wear fucking, and I'm not talking about the do not resuscitate and stuff. I'm talking about how people have told their friends and having their contacts or have a bracelet or whatever that's literally like, don't call a fucking ambulance. Like, oh, really? like, like let my friends fucking take me. Yeah. Like, you drive me to the hospital, please, instead of calling an ambulance because I can't afford to be 
Yeah. That's that's fucking nuts. That's insane. So at that point, it's like you don't really worry about the salaries of doctors. It's just like give people affordable health care because, that, I mean, when you are in a population of 320 million people, like you got to take care of them, man. It shouldn't even be about affordable health care, by the way. We're supposedly the greatest fucking nation in the world, right? Highest GDP, all this bullshit, right? We're the, we're the best. We're number one. We're the greatest nation. Then, then everybody should be able to be healthy because the money's there and the science and the technology's there. There's no other excuse. If we're the greatest, we got the highest GDP. We're the greatest nation in the world. Woo, rock on. Number one, USA. Yeah. There's no reason why people shouldn't just be able to go to the doctor or get a free ambulance ride. Like, there's no reason that an ambulance should cost me fucking three grand or two grand or whatever it is. So, it, so None. A, a, a doctor would get paid per patient, you would think, right? So universal health care, you'd get more patients. I would again. I think Canada is a great example because they probably have the largest population when it comes to universal health care. Seeing what the top doctors make in, in that type of environment. Yeah, so, yeah. I should have just done my research a little bit, you know, and just kind of. Well, no, well we didn't know we were getting into yeah, this. That's usually what always happens on the podcast. Right. No, that that would just be interesting to me. I'm sure there are still lucrative doctors out in Canada that are making a really good living and and doing the best life that they can. If the not, thing, do you think they'd have doctors? Like, they would all move to the U.S. or something if yeah. they could make way more money. The only, and my only argument that I'm, I'm kind of curious about, Johnny, and, and talking about all of this, is with the advancements of health and technology in the United States, this is the how it's been has led to it. Not not a universal health care, right? Privatized institutions have, have, I get led, what you're, have I get what you're getting have, at. have led to the advancements that have happened in the United States. Which, which, again, I think some of those technologies have been suppressed from the public, and there's probably things out there that can cure things that we don't know about. That's conspiracy. That's just my opinion. But for, for, what, for what it is, this is what we've created through privatized healthcare. So would that, if we do go to a, a socialized healthcare, what type of effects would that have on the advancements of technology in the healthcare in the United States? But I mean, so you're saying that like Canada's never made an advancement. It's no, no, all been the. And I think there's a lot of universities that get funded through the government that might be separate, and they can still have those types. And you know, with Fauci and gain of function and the money that gets thrown at different types of health, you mm -hmm. know, so that money still exists. And that, the advancements, maybe the advancements still would happen, but would they happen to the effect that they happen now when you change to a socialized healthcare? Honestly. At this point, I'd be willing to take a hit and say, slow down the advancements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> Me too, for sure. Like, and I'm not saying that for the same reason you are, because right. you're against the advancements. I'm not against the advancements. No, 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 I'm not either. Slow it down, for sure. No, I'm not against it slowing down. I say speed it up. Yeah. What I'm saying is I would take the hit of it slowing down if it meant universal health care Oh, for gotcha, 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 yeah. gotcha. I see what you're saying. Oh, this is saying, you know, the old Googler. Canadian doctors make anywhere from 278,000 or 278. Yeah, 100,000. Yeah, 278. I can't read. Is it pounds or what? They're not. I no, mean, it's dollar amount. 278,000. 278,000? Yeah. $1,000 to 700. Like two, 278, 000. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck, I feel stupid. Yeah. And yeah, 278,000. And then up to 769. So they're fine. Yeah, they're, they're fine. fine. Yeah, you, you try telling me you can't live off $250,000, Paul. Yeah, no, I mean, for them to do that in a in a but it's universal, universal health care, that's impressive. Right. Doctors aren't the, hurting. Obviously, on the higher end, they'd be, they'd be your surgeons and shit, which, yeah, they rightfully so. But do do people fucking become a doctor? To I mean, yeah, the, the money's nice, but do you not want to do it because you want to help people? Yeah. You know? But even then, 250 k is a lot of money. Oh, fuck yeah, I'd love to make that. Yeah. That would that's, not bat an eye. That, that surprises me. I, did, I didn't think it was going to be that high, but for that to be the national average... No, don't get me wrong, it's make. fucking less than here, I bet. But yeah, I would wouldn't be surprised if it was right around the same, honestly. But whenever you It's still enough money. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's crazy, man. That's crazy. I, I don't know. The fact that we don't have the it, it's it's not the fact that we don't have universal health care yet. It's the fact that and once again, I could be hundred percent wrong. I hope that someone in the comments corrects me and shows me the math and is like, this is why it shouldn't be a thing. But if your only argument is We've done it this way forever, and why should I pay for you? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I think that in a, in a free country, which is what we allegedly live in, um, you kind of get weirded out by the fact that you give control over something like that, where it's applied to everyone and you don't have a choice. Um, I think that, that that is a little bit scary. Um, but at the same time, 
I think when it comes to health, well, it's you, literally only a benefit for that, you, though. That's, that's what and I'm if saying, you want, yeah. are, you, are you saying that Canada doesn't have any private health care? Because I bet they do. I yeah. bet you can pay more fucking money to get better fucking health care. But yeah. at least they have. But do you see what I'm saying when it, when you think about the United States, you think about freedom and and, and maybe you don't. Even, I don't. I've never lived in Canada, but do you have to opt in to this universal health care? Like when you're born, and let's say you're just an average person. You're opted into this no matter what. I think the freedom of choice is the only thing that kind of just gets to me a little What's bit. What's the downside of being opted in, though? No, I'm just strictly from a freedom point of view. I think that that's why a lot of people are like pushed pushed away from it. Because when Obama came in, and to I me, think he came he came about it the wrong way with Obamacare because he was well because Obamacare wasn't even Obamacare is not universal health care. What was it? It's not. It's you, we're going to force you to have insurance. You had to have insurance. Yeah. The, the that. kind That's of not universal health care at all. And yeah, you had to call and you had to do it and you had to do all the work and you had to pick what, what you wanted, bronze, gold, or blah, blah, blah. But then you only had certain periods where you could sign up and all this other bullshit or you get fined. All he did was legally require you to have health insurance. That's not universal health care. Okay. So we've never really even tried to establish universal health care. No. No. Okay. No, because then you get people to think it's just socialism. They think that's bad. To an extent, it can be, yes. But not, I mean, you can... Why can't you take bit, bits and pieces of the best of everything? Capitalism, socialism, communism, and fucking turn it into something great, something different. Why not make something new? Reinvent the fucking wheel, you know? I agree. I like that, Carl. I never heard that before. Yeah. Take a little bit of each and make something beautiful. Well, yeah. Well, and I'd the, be curious to have Pat on and see what he thinks about universal health care. be interesting. I'd be curious to have, like I said, I'd like someone to argue against and obviously i'd have to do my own research because i'm just you know spitting stuff right now that like i'd have to look into it a lot more if i were to actually have someone to yeah, argue gets, against but yeah, i, I want someone with facts. like yeah i want someone with facts on the other end to be like oh this is why we shouldn't you know like a legitimate reason why we shouldn't and just to I me mean, quick looking up i looked it up just a minute ago we were doing talking earlier it, there's 30 countries that have universal health care i didn't know that yeah i didn't either you know and then what's the t- largest country population wise that has universal. Uh, probably Canada, maybe. I don't I'd know. I'd have to I'd look it up. India has. You know, I'd have to look good. it up specifically. But the other thing, primary care physicians in the United States, on average, make two hundred forty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, literally less. Than, so it's less than Canada. It's like less thousand dollars. Yeah, year. it's like, and it get you know, it's all what you want to get yourself paid. I mean, you do what you want here, but it's like, what the fuck? We have more doctors that could skew the average, but true. True, yeah, because an average is, you know, obviously everything up, added up and divided, but... I mean, it's pretty close, though. It's right on the money, honestly. And even 240000 a year, like, come on, man. Come on. I... Right. So why would you... So it, with that, with, well, so with that, why would you not move to Canada, make more money, and see less people? True. Very true. Well, it's very hard to get citizenship and... I know, but I'm just saying it's for the sake of argument. Again, yeah. if, you would, if you're a doctor, you could do it. But... That's what I'm saying. Go make 10, 10 grand more up in Canada... And see less patients. Yeah. You know. That's true. It's very true. So, I mean, I, it, I mean, yeah. Now, the more I think about it, man, like universal health care should be a thing. Again, for me, I think the biggest thing is like freedom. But like for people who are born, if they were born into universal health care, I don't think they would even really see that as a, a, as a threat to freedom. Right? No. Just the right to pursue happiness, if that's what truly the Constitution is or whatever – our dream is here in America, the pursuit of happiness, I think would require free health care or not free health care, but universal health care. Yeah. I don't, yeah. The biggest population wise mm-hmm. for universal health care, China, second, India, really? Then Indonesia, then Pakistan, then Brazil, then Russia, then Mexico, then Japan, Philippines, Egypt, Turkey, Germany, Thailand, United Kingdom, France, South Africa, Italy, Colombia, South Korea, Spain, Argentina, Algeria, Canada, Morocco, Peru, Malaysia, Ghana, Australia, North Korea, Taiwan, Burkina Faso, Sri Lanka, Chile, Romania, Netherlands, Rwanda, Tunisia, Belgium, Cuba, Czech Republic, Greek, Sweden, Portugal, Australia, sorry, Austria, Israel, Switzerland, Serbia, Hong Kong, Bulgaria, Singapore, Denmark, so, Finland, Norway, so on and so on. Talk about the one that matters the most, and, the, and, and if I would be curious to know how China's health system works, but if it's truly universal health care in China... Look and how, this doesn't look, this is doesn't necessarily say 
good universal health care. Sure. You know what I mean? Because you I mean, like got China and yeah, India. That's, like, and that's what I was saying earlier about North Korea on this list and stuff. But you got the United Kingdom on there as well. You got Sweden. You but got. I mean, but look at China, though. What's their population? Like 2 billion? Yeah, their their health care is working pretty fucking well. Pretty fucking well. Same with India. India is like at a billion people. That's, Damn. I think it's China and, and India. It's like almost half the population of the earth. That doesn't necessarily mean that their health care is working well. What do you mean? How do they reach 2 billion people, Johnny? <laughs> they got some good shit going on there, bro. People fucking, they doing what they want to do. I'd be willing to sit that man. Dude, how do you reach a population of 2 billion? That doesn't necessarily mean healthcare though, man. Like if you were to choose right now between going to a doctor in Sweden and going to one in China, which one are you going to do? I don't know. I've never Sweden been has a way Sweden. lower population, but I'm going to Sweden. But with 2 billion people, you have more doctor's offices. Shit like that. I don't know, man. No, no. And I could be wrong. Reach, but you, don't, you don't reach 2 billion people without good health care. I'm sorry. You just don't. That's an impressive feat, man. True. We're not even close to that. 350 million. We're nowhere close to 2 billion people, man. Maybe at some point you have to. I don't know. I don't think population and health care directly correlate at all, to be honest. You don't think so? No. I think it has to a little bit. I'm not saying a lot, but a little bit it has to. I don't think there's any way around it, man. No, there's probably a tiny bit there, but I, I mean, I'm talking minuscule. I'm talking like 2% be, or less. I'd be curious, man. I'd really be curious to go to China and see how their health care is. With 2 billion people just to see how that system works, that's got to be a stressful type of system. Oh, yeah. Like critical, I don't know. Well, it's, I'm sure their work times would be high just because of population. Mm-hmm. You know, so when people... You, you got to look at the context of what the argument is. You know, you say wait times. Well, where, where the fuck are you talking out of the 30 countries that supply universal health care? Yeah. You want to talk 2 billion people in China? Sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You probably got to wait for fucking ever. But look at the other countries, something closer to us or, you know, and pull an average and see, you know, again, and it depends on the quality of health care you provide. That's true. I know. I think it would work and I think it's necessary and I think it needs to happen. I think I agree. Oh, I, I do too. I don't, I yeah. don't see a reason for there not to be. I really don't. I don't either. Yeah. And they talk about, you know, maybe prescriptions, most health, most private health insurance, you get the generic fucking version anyway. Yeah. My insurance as good as it supposedly is it's still generic shit. You got to fight. You got to fight with your insurance company to get the name brand shit, which I don't know how big of a difference there That's actually the is. Thing Dude, I've, even when I had, when I had insurance, when I was a kid under like my dad's insurance and my mom's insurance and shit, I still even remember then you never got the name brand, whatever, no, ever. You always you got do. generic, which not that fucking matters. Right. Again, but, I don't know that it matters that much. So again, that argument, but you got some weird long fucking name that you've never heard of before. And then right under it would say, Oh, well this is the equivalent to such, such. whatever. Right. Viagra. <laughs> We got lots of prescriptions. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, that, if that's an argument, you know, again, you're getting a generic shit already. So what the fuck's it matter? It doesn't. And they have enough for everyone too when it comes to that shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know there is. And there would be a way that the government manipulates it and makes money off of it. But whatever. At that point, at least everyone. They has don't have it. to. They're making more money off of it now, just because they get all their. I mean, you got your super PACs and your funds and all these stuff where these big pharmacy corporations and hospitals and stuff are making so much money that they just continue to pay our government to, to keep healthcare private. Yeah. Yep. There you go. I don't know, man. Like I said, I, I would be, I would, I would love to have a guest on and talk about this. Who's like for privatized healthcare and have them give us our explanation on why they think that it should stay the way that it is and have a status quo. Um, because it'd be very interesting, man. To, to say that people shouldn't have the right to health care is, is very beyond me. When we're, in 2022 or whatever, it should just, I don't know. We have the ability and the means yeah, exactly. to do it. Yeah. Exactly. Like we have, we have the ability to do it and we have the means to, to do it, to take care of other human beings. And we're specifically us as the United States. And I'm talking in so many aspects. I'm talking in wages. I'm talking in healthcare, education, all this different stuff. We have the ability and the means. And we as a country say, nah, fuck that. Yeah, I think that's just because it's rich people who don't want to relinquish their power, man. And they want oh, 100%. To, and that's got to be them. They just, which it, yeah, I don't know. That's just a whole other fucking topic. But it, it's just like, why don't these rich people want us to advance? Why don't they want, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. They just want everything for themselves. It's crazy the amount of greed that lies within our body that runs through the blood of our veins to where you have people who are this rich who want only even more money 
so other people suffer. They literally want to suck us dry like a fucking take or leech. And they've tricked people out there making 200000 a year that no, they're know, one yeah, of them. No, I know, yeah. I, like, I know that, man. But that's fucking nuts how psychopathic these people are, man. Maybe they're not people. Maybe David Icke is right. They are lizard people <laughs> that are fucking just, dude, they have it down, man. They know exactly how to rule and run us. And it's working, man. It's fucking working. All right, is it not? In the United States, are you whatever country you fucking go to, you have the political elite dictatorship, whatever the fuck you want to call it. We're in a dictatorship, man. We are. A cor- corporate oligarchy. A corporate but. oligarchy slash dictatorship. Like David Icke said when he was on the show, man, he said it's, it's an entity that you don't know who the fuck they are. Do you think that the Rockefellers think that they're ballers? It's not even them. It's someone else. You have the, the, the six big umbrella corporations. It's someone even beyond that. Maybe David Icke's wrong. I don't know. But it's just nuts to me that it, even if they are human beings, and that's a real thing, that they are that psychopathic to where they want so much wealth that they hinder the advancement of human, uh, of human civilization. That's insane. That's insane, man. And we allow it. I saw a good quote the other day. It was uh, Rockefeller. What's the other? There's the three. What's the, like the three main ones? Uh, uh, Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan's, Rothschild's. Yeah, Rothschild's. That's the other Coke one, Koch Brothers. Yo, Coke. I think it was yeah. Coke. Which allegedly yeah. the Coke Brothers are libertarians. I don't know how much I believe of that. Coke, Rothschild's, and uh, what was that? whatever the other one is. It's like, you, you ever notice how you don't hear their, their names anymore? Yeah, you don't at all. You, what do you hear now? Musk, Bezos, yeah. Gates. yeah. Just, I've always heard Bill Gates. Always, yeah, Bill he's Gates. been around for a while. But I'm saying, but ever since I was young, but, yeah. But you know, you don't really hear the other ones anymore. That's They're still rich as fuck. Oh fuck yeah, they are. But still I own think, like everything. I think it's oh, because yeah. they've reached a pinnacle over over them. I don't know, maybe individually, but money wise, family. Because even their puppets to them. Just like we're not going to have property anymore because BlackRock Financial is buying up every fucking all property that exists. Really? Like literally just buying all the land in the United States. No, it's Bill Gates too, farmland. Maybe he's part of BlackRock. Who knows? He most likely has money invested in BlackRock. Would be my guess. That's part of his portfolio. Probably. I don't know. That's nuts, man. Where are we at? What's the time over there, Carl? Hour 10. Damn. That flowed pretty well, man. At first it was a little dry, and then we got right into it. Mm-hmm. And then she got wet. It, she, she got real wet, bro. <laughs> she got real wet. This is nice, man. Paul's ready know. for the monsoon with his hat. No, I'm ready for the sun, man. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm a bald dude, man. Once, All right. And you got a perfect hat for when you go bald, Johnny. I'm yeah. sorry, but it's gonna, Carl, you have beautiful hair. You'll be fine, bro. I don't even know why you wear a hat, dude. You should never wear a hat. Yeah, dude, let that flaunt that. Fuck yeah, dude. With beautiful hair locks. like that. Oh my god! If I if I had hair like that, I would never wear. I'd never wear a hat either. I wouldn't. Either. I wear my hat to cover up my bald spot. Dude, you're wearing a hat right now. That's a beautiful hat. Got, <laughs> That's a beautiful hat. That's gorgeous. <laughs> For anyone listening on Spotify or iTunes, you need to check out our YouTube channel and look how beautiful Carl's hair is right now. It's fucking gorgeous. Granted, our average duration is like 14 to 15 minutes for people who watch. But Carl, damn it, someone's gonna check your hair out, man. Does it actually tell you that? Oh, yeah, on, oh, on Anchor. YouTube's got all those analytics oh, yeah. or Anchor uh, or any of them. YouTube Studio just came out with an update. It's it's pretty cool. Um, new interface, shit like that. I, I'm not, I'm not used to it yet, but um, I would never wear a hat if I had hair like that. <laughs> Holy shit! One day I will have hair, man. With the progression of our health system, with universal health care, you could have some. Yeah, universal health care. Bosley would fall in line. Give me some plug in plants like LeBron James got. I'd be good, man. There Which is go. a very painful process, by the way. Bosley is. Oh really? Oh, it's it's surgery on your head. They they implant. Here into your. I mean, I know that like LeBron got it done, and I know that uh, Daniel Negreanu, a professional poker player, got it done and has like a full head of hair now and stuff. So but it looks real. I looks like real hair. Really. I think in China or Japan, it was one of the two. They started this TikTok trend. This was years ago, but they were they actually they would shave like your bald area. They would match your hair. They'd find a wig or like, whatever it is. Glue that bitch on. A, like hardcore super glue where it would stay on for months, and you're just wearing this fucking it, and you can cut it. Make it look whatever the way you want it. I'll send you a video of it, man. It, it's insane. It's legit. I actually looked and see. I'm just. I'm just gonna accept my baldness. Well, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, if it was free, if they were like, if it was a hundred percent free, and they came up and they were like, "Hey, you want hair? Not hair plugs, but the hair implants or whatever. The shit that 
The shit that LeBron did and the shit that Daniel Negreanu did. No, no, no. You don't want to do that. You want to do what we're talking about right now. No, I don't want a wig. Like, yeah, give, me, yeah. give me the ability to grow no, real no, hair again. No, no, bro. And, and look at LeBron's hair again right now. Hair again. LeBron's already receding again, bro. And okay. that shit's like, Bosley don't work, dude. That shit don't work. That's just overpriced. But anyway, man, great, great conversation, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I think, Johnny, you're not going to be able to make it next week, correct? No, I have to work. Cool. We'll still hang out, man. If you want to do it, we can do it. Yeah. I don't fucking care. We'll make Fuck it happen. Yeah. I'm going to try and get a guest on next week. It'll be fun. Um, hope you guys like this podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. And the best thing you can do for Talk Junkies is share the shit out of this video. Grab your phone. Go to your contacts list. Uh, uh, click. Go to YouTube.com. Search Talk Junkies. Find this podcast. Copy the URL. And then share that to everyone in your phone. If 30 people do that, just imagine the impact it would have. And then... Go to those same contacts and do the exact same thing with the top video on Pornhub. <laughs> and then see which reaction you get. Yeah. That, that whatever one they like better. I think they're going to like this one better. I would hope. Well, most guys would like the other one. But <laughs> anywho, uh, appreciate anyone who watches this shit, man. I, I Again, I greatly appreciate it. Carl, thanks for coming, man. Johnny, it's always a pleasure. Love being here. Always a good time. Talk Junkies for Life, baby. I'm going to do it even if it's uh, when I'm 80 years old and we only have 1,200 subscribers. I don't care. I'm going to be doing it. To all our junkies out there, stay fly and ring the bell.